Coming to you live from a cabin deep in the heart of the Canadian wilderness. Turn down the lights, get yourself a drink, and let's settle in for tonight's broadcast. Good evening, and welcome to Midnight Mysteries. Here are your hosts. Good evening, listeners. This is Nathan, one of your hosts for tonight's show. Hey, everyone. My name is Teresa, and tonight we're talking about mermaids, sirens, and sounds of the sea. If you want to learn more about these kinds of topics, like mermaids, remember to click subscribe. Whether you're lounging at home, on a late night drive, or just dreaming by the water, tonight we're diving into the mysterious world of mermaids. So grab your favorite drink, turn down the lights, let's settle in for tonight's show. Mermaids, those enchanting beings that are half-human, half-aquatic mammal hybrids, have fascinated us for centuries. Let's dive into history first. It may surprise you, but the earliest mermaid legends don't originate with the 17th or 18th century pirates, and they don't originate with the Greeks and their legends of sirens. Or rather, the earliest legends come from ancient Assyria around 1000 BCE. That's over 3000 years ago. The first mermaid we see in history is the goddess Atart, or Atargatis. And the account of Atargatis says that she's known for her beauty and transforms herself into a mermaid out of shame after accidentally killing her human lover. By the way, it's interesting to note how many of these legends involve these ethereal beings being intimate with humans, but that's a different topic for another time. As mentioned in Greek mythology, we have sirens, which are very similar to legends of mermaids. And it's actually where we get our word siren for sirens on emergency vehicles. These creatures lured sailors to their doom with their irresistible songs. Then there's Scandinavian folklore, where the Havfrua, or, or sea woman, was known for her dual nature of being nurturing yet dangerous, and it was to help reflect the sea's unpredictability. But it, it went deeper with that of personal stories from both higher-up figures in Scandinavian culture to common fishermen that talked about their personal experience with these sea women. But mermaids are referenced in folklore across cultures in different countries and throughout history. There's the Japanese Inigo or the, the Selkies in Irish folklore. Then there's the African mythology with Mamiwara and the Caribbean tales of Luska, which often get intertwined with the tales of mermaids. Fast forward to the Middle Ages and mermaid sightings were common among sailors. Christopher Columbus, during his voyages, wrote about seeing mermaids off the coast of Hispaniola in 1493. He described them, and as I quote, not as beautiful as they are painted, since in some ways they have the face like a man. In the 17th century, Dutch sailors reported encountering mermaids in the East Indies. These creatures were believed to predict storms and shipwrecks, blending beauty with danger. But even in modern times, mermaid sightings and stories persist. In 2009, people in Kirat Yam, Israel, claimed to be seeing mermaids. The sightings were so frequent that the town council offered a million dollar reward for proof. And this was both local people and tourists. In 2012 in Zimbabwe, workers building a dam reported being chased away by mermaids. Rituals had to be performed to uh, appease these beings before work could resume showing how deeply mermaid legends still influence some cultures. Now, I, I don't know about you, but whenever I hear about myths or legends that appear across continents and, and cultures independently of one another, it makes me pay attention. Tonight, we're interviewing Ryan, aka Sauce90 from his TikTok account. Ryan is a commercial fisherman who has been out at sea for six years and spends nearly 200 days on the ocean. Ryan is known for his footage of mermaids, both live-streamed and uploaded. His encounters have garnered over 600,000 followers on TikTok, and it's a privilege to have him join us tonight. Ryan, you're on the air. What's up, guys? It's me, Ryan, also known as Sauce90. 
So Ryan, how did you originally get into commercial fishing? Was this something you grew up wanting to be, you know, as a, as a little boy? Is it something you happened upon? Um, where I'm from, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like one of those like jobs where like you grow up, you see the fishermen, you're like, Oh, those guys are cool. You know, they got the big, big, nice cars, big trucks. And it's, it's pretty common, you know, in this area for, for, you know, that type of job, you just got to get in where you fit and find the right people, to, you know, to get into that field. But, um, I wasn't one of those people who my dad was a fisherman and, you know, that way I got into it. That's how mostly guys get into it. Um, I was just lucky and I got a chance to prove myself out there. So um, I've been doing it for the past six years. I love six it. Six years. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And and what does a typical shift look like for a commercial fisherman? Is it, you know, nine to five Monday through Fridays? <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> um, typically, usually we're, uh, we're gone um, out on the ocean for about a period of time. On a, on a scheduled a shift would probably be maybe, you know, five five days minimum, you know, depending on whether we fill up the boat fast or it could be longer, seven days. I don't really like to have like a punch in type deal where like I will on work this shift, this shift, you know, right. It's yeah. very different. Just jump off the edge of the boat. Be like, yeah, quit in time. Time to go home. <laughs> yeah. <Can you> imagine <laughs> like I'm done so, for the day guys. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. yeah. I'm going back, but you know, once you're out there, you know, <laughs> you're out be... there and, and we're funny. not coming back till we either fill the boat or run out of gas. So, yeah. you know, yeah that's why you know it's not built for everybody you know right yeah i guess that's rain or shine too hey just through snow oh yeah rain uh shine i'm i'm fortunate enough to uh fish all year round i do winter fishing as well because my boat has many licenses for uh product so once the seasons change we change what we get so i'm out of the year i'm probably 200 days out in the ocean wow that's wow. yeah on yeah average. that's a lot of time at sea yeah yeah i've so, recorded uh quite a lot of time out there what areas do you typically fish in so we um we port from new bedford which is maybe about five miles away from the atlantic ocean just new bedford is, is a big city as as far as fish and um revenue and th back in the day that was the whaling capital of the world you know it's actual city where um herman melville got the story for moby dick so it's there's a lot of history in this city and, and the fishing there is abundant. You know, there's a lot of boats and we go out all along the North Atlantic coast as North as Nova Scotia. And we go all the way down the coast as far as like, you know, maybe, maybe Maryland. And we mm -hmm. go out as far as George's banks, which is like, if you know the different distance between like America and like England, it's like right in the middle. Wow. So that's fun. Yeah. That's quite, yeah, the, it's pretty it's far. quite the territory, hey? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes before we even start fishing, we got to be on a boat for like four, five days just to get to where we're going, you know, and right, then right. start the fishing. The travel time. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. I would imagine there's so many rules around like overfishing too. That's why you got to go to like different Correct. areas. And, yeah. Correct. Gotcha. Because also, you know, we fish, but we also have respect for the like, economy. So we don't want to overfish a certain area and maybe, you know, cause some you know species to go extinct or or cut the numbers down so we're always constantly moving the government's closing off areas letting us fish in new ones you know it's it's big rules you know and if you're caught fishing an area that's closed or you're not supposed to be fishing it's it's, it's a hefty fine but you guys can't hit up a starbucks or tim hortons on the way uh, of your road <laughs> Boy, trip down wish. to your fishing grounds <laughs> i wish man somebody come up with the uber with the drone please yeah. <laughs> sail through starbucks like, just just for like the little trips off the coast of like maybe yeah. nantucket or you know nova scotia or something man yeah. i get phone service send the drone out i'll take some that's tim a Hardy's, brilliant man. idea just throw it off the back of a plane like a, yeah. a shipment too <laughs> Just That's have funny. someone out there on a buoy, on a buoy with a little kiosk, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of coffee, can you take us to that moment when you first saw a mermaid? Did you did you think you needed more coffee or had spent too much time at sea already? Like delirious or something. Oh, uh, it was it was just one of those moments is like, is this really happening right now? Because being out at sea for so long, like like you know what a dolphin is, you know what a whale is. They travel in packs. When you hear them, you see them. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not, this was a totally different scenario. And I was just, where's my phone? Where's my, where's my phone? 
Yeah. And I'm, I just started recording, I started going live, not even recording. I went live. So wow. it's just, I didn't want no, like, <laughs> this is fake. I'm like, just go I live. None of that. Yeah. 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 yeah and and then... I was just full of it. Like, it was just like, even when I talk about it still to this day, I like, cause it was a crazy experience for me. <laughs> changed my whole life oh I, I imagine so did you did you have much belief in the paranormal or cryptids prior to then or was this something that just shifted your paradigm altogether before you know before this happened i had always had a mystery you know about the about the ocean because us we don't know anything about it you know i've always believed that there was like a mermaid or or you know like a siren i've always believed in that stuff but it was like very near and far in the mind you know like when it was brought up in conversation i'm like oh yeah i believe you know if there's aliens they can live in the ocean i believe it i believe like that's the type of you know level they're on but after this experience there's no doubt in my mind <laughs> wow yeah, no kidding and there's a there's a lot of fake content out there too but the fact that you you know you went live with everyone um I don't even know if my first instinct would be to go for my phone. I'd probably just be sitting there with my jaw hanging down and drooling just in awe of what I was seeing. Well, well, the thing, the thing is before I, I went, you know, live as, as the mermaid guy, you know, I was just, I'd go live while I was fishing near the coast because people like kind of like to watch it. It's like that deadliest catch type thing. You know, people enjoyed seeing the type of work I do. They thought it was pretty cool. So I would go live pretty often, you know, that that was my like niche, you know, I was the fishing guy, you know, the funny fishing guy. And then all of a sudden, boom, this happened, you know, it was yeah. <laughs> life changing in so many different ways. How yeah. long into your fishing career did it take to encounter? Um, this happened um, two years ago. So um, maybe just into my fourth year, just okay. just into my fourth year, Interesting. maybe at the end of my third were your other crewmates around when this happened? Uh, if so, how yes. did they react? Yes, um, the captain I was with at the time, he it was he heard it first with me in the wheelhouse before I went outside, and he's like, we were looking around because you know you just look, you, you hear noises. My first instinct is like, what is that? Start looking around. So when you say you heard, it. sorry to interrupt. When you say you heard it, what is it? What does it sound like for our audience? It was, it was that very very high pitch. Like, oh, I I can't even. I can even get to that high pitch, you know, I have to put, you know, the nuggets in a vice to even attempt to, <laughs> to get to that pitch. Like, like it is like, like you hearing it in the video does no justice into, into hearing it um, in person. It, it just so high and it just resonates. You could feel, you could feel it vibrate off the metal of the boat. You know, it was, it was, and it was not just coming from one side of the boat. It was coming from all directions, not at the same time, all differently, you know, yeah. And my, my captain was like, I ain't messing with that. He's like, <laughs> I ain't messing with that. I'm like, I'm going out there. He's like, do what you want. I'm not messing with that. And I'm like, okay. He went back inside and you know, the, the other mate, of course he was, he was sleeping. And that's why I recorded it. I recorded it for the main reason to have it so I could show him. I wanted to show the guy that was, you no, know, I was fishing with my buddy Dave, rest his soul, you know, cause Dave actually uh, passed away a year ago while we were fishing. Oh. He oh, had a heart sorry. attack, but uh, he was he was one of those guys. Who, he was there when it happened, and, and and I wanted to wanted him to experience it. And I showed yeah. him, and he's like, "I knew it, I knew it. I've seen those things in the water." Because he was like an older guy. He was like in his like fifties. You know, I was kind of like his paddle one. Like he taught me everything I knew. So it was like he used to tell me these stories. I'm like, "Hey, yeah, but I'm trying to work, Dave. Come on, Dave. What do you smoke <laughs> today, Dave? Come on, like yeah. trying to work. Hey, you want to talk about this aliens and stuff? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah." Dave knew what's uh, up. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 Dave, <laughs> Dave's my boy. So had oh, your he had your had your captain heard these things or seen these things before? And that's why he's like, I'm out of here. Like, I don't want to talk about this. I don't think he 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 had uh seen this before or heard this before. He was very unsettled by it. He he was like, he was like, and the funny thing is he has like a, a tattoo of like a mermaid on his arm, but she's like pinned up and all like roped up and stuff, like all like 80s tattoo like fisherman style and i'm like i'm like what do you not telling me what do you know he's like oh that's just my pinup tattoo i'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> said it looks like my ex-wife <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say maybe it's a merit badge for a commercial fisherman to to see their first mermaid just now now you're in the club you've made it yeah no and you know i was actually just the one to pull out this phone 
you know, because right. I don't know if you guys have ever, you know, t- talked to somebody even who is in the Navy or if you get a chance to talk to somebody, you know, who, who's a fisherman, I bet you they'll tell you that they've seen something that just wasn't right or unsettled with them or something that they knew just, you know, in the sky wasn't a plane or an orb that came out of out of the water at nighttime. You know, these are things that are regularly seen because because people forget on the ocean at night, there's no shadows. There's no, mm. there's no air pollution. There's no building obstruction. There, there's no lights. It's just you in the sky. So when the moonlight shines, it you see you see everything. You know, it's just as bright as the, as the sun out there. So you see everything in the night sky when you look up. You know, it's not a plane. Mm. You you see the dots separate into other dots and you know go around each other, then go off in different areas. It's, it's when you're out in the water that long, that's just normal, you know. Right. Oh, yeah. look, look at that. Everybody stops working, looks at it. Oh, no shit, takes up the goes back to work, you know. It's just, <laughs> it's just a UFO. Come on, we saw that last yeah. night. Yeah. Oh my god, that's yeah. wild. Well, Nathan, you mentioned Starbucks before, like having coffee. Yeah. So I guess it's no wonder that like the Starbucks logo is oh, a mermaid yeah. a siren, of sorts. Right? Right? Like a siren, yeah. yeah. That's true. It, have you seen what they look like? That. Have you seen what I've, they look I've, like, Ryan? I've I've seen I've only seen like silhouettes and like mm. when I slow my videos down I've had other people look at my videos and say like oh here's a shadow and here's this or here's like the, I have this one video and and, I, and I'll send it to you guys it's it's the sun setting and I didn't even notice this it was just I was catching a nice sunset and you see something pop up over the wave and as it pops up you can see its face and over the tail in the wave further down you see the the actual tail and the silhouette i have you see the eyes you see everything and then it just dips back in the water you know it's very like like blurry creature type it's just i always see it when it's moving or it's too dark or but every time it is i i capture what i see yeah. you know that's wild those are my favorite I types wish of encounters face to face yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah do you well it's like if it does it always feel like you're in a safe place to see them or do they feel threatening or om- ominous when you when you catch a, a glimpse of them is there something unsettling about these in- encounters there was there was the only thing that's unsell unsettling to me when this experience was going on or the most of what i felt vulnerable was when um after the first experience started happening i started having um dreams i would dream about them and it would be constant and it would be only when I was on the boat and it would be so real. And it would be, and it'd be so vivid. And that's the point where like, cause it was, that's why I felt vulnerable. I'm like, all right, this is like, kind of like, cause this is happening now. This is going on. Or like it's, it was too much. It was too much. Yeah. And like, I, when I first heard the noise, I would go home and then I would start hearing the noise all over again, as loud as if I was hearing it right there. You know, I had a breakdown in the shower. I had to have to, my girl had to like, go ahead, come pick me up. Like I was just hearing it from everywhere in the shower one day. I even had to talk to somebody like a therapist after wow. all these situations. Cause it was, it got to the point where it was just, I was just hearing that high pitch all the time, all the yeah. time. It, it was, yeah. it was in my mind, like literally well, I still hear it t- t- to this day sometimes. And I just block it out. You know, it's, it's, it's <laughs> this, yeah. I'm telling you, this experience is crazy. Well, it like how it has affected me, me yeah i believe that and it reminds me like i always grew up being very obsessed with like mythology um uh, i'm italian background like from sicily so like there's the legend you know when odysseus was going back to uh, his homeland he was like sailing through the straits and like they had to avoid the sirens and if if mm-hmm. they heard the sirens they would enchant them with their sound and whatever so it reminds me of like it's like permeating through your mind like you can't like get rid of it right it's almost like it was, an enchantment of sorts. Like, I don't, I'm sure you weren't like, let me go join the sirens in the water and like swim to my I death. But let me but... tell you, let me tell you, I got as close to the water as I possibly could. Yeah. Cause you were when curious, I was shooting right? my video. Yeah. When I was shooting my video, I got as close to the water as I possibly could. And it went through my mind to go in, but I was like, yeah. it, like yeah. a few times. I'm like, but, but it was just, it was just so much at the time. Cause I had never experienced this before. Yeah. ever so it was just a lot for me to overcome and deal with and then once it started happening and then once the government got involved it was just so government much. government got involved you can't just drop that and not, and not dive <laughs> so into casual. it more it's, it's, yeah it's just, just the government it's just, yeah 
<laughs> yeah, but it's just the way the story goes, you know, it's just it's just the next part of the story. You know, I posted these things, then, you know, the next my 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 TikTok gets shut down. Boom, banned just for posting these mermaid videos. Mm. It made a new one, reposted the videos. Boom, gets banned again. Next time I go to work, government's on my boat and a company, Noah, saying that we're taking over and they have a scientific laboratory on my boat and we're going to survey the ocean and we're going to go here, 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 here. And you're the boat that's going to take us. What? I have it all. I have it all documented. I have all the videos. I have all the videos of them putting the scientific lab on my boat. I have, I have all, all the stuff there. They, they had military guards there. I could you couldn't even take my phone out on my own boat on deck. I still that's did it, wild. Though. Jeez, so you're not you're not yeah. joking when this this changed your life. No, no. Oh. Then you know the the there was supposed to be on be on the survey for three weeks, and and after the first week was done, I started taking my phone out more and more. The first week was done. I go to get my check on my way home. I have to go through this little rural area. There's no headlights. It's in the woods. A car comes real close to me, drives me off the road, and I go into a brick wall and into a tree. And the other person keeps driving. And then I miss the next two lags of that of those trips being surveyed. What? It's just it's just crazy. It's just it's yeah. It was my had my car was was totaled. I had to get cut out of my car. Thank God I only broke like my leg and then a few ribs and like my nose, but it was it was crazy. and all these experiences happened within two weeks' time of me posting those videos. Whoa. That's wild. So I, I want to jump back to something really, really quick and then continue to dive into this, this government shadow secrecy side of things. But when you say you start having dreams after these encounters and you, you start hearing the sound, do you think this was strictly a, a physical response, a physiological response because you were traumatized or do you believe that it had opened up some sort no. of supernatural door in your no, life? No, this was, this, was, this, this, was, this was a connection. This felt like a connection. Because cause there was, and when I heard the voice or the sound or the song, whatever people want to call it, there was no malice. I, I didn't feel any malice in the voice. There was no intent. I, it was more like a, a communication. Because if, if, you watch, if you watch the video, the noise only happens when I yell out to it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm screaming out in the video, where are you? What are you? And then it'd do it. And then I wouldn't hear nothing. And then I'd yell out again. And then be a pause and then it it, it, it was something smart about it was it was there was something it was I, this, yeah i was trying to communicate with you it was yeah. it was on such a deeper level of, of like intelligence it was it was crazy it reminds me a lot of the the mothman sightings too typically people when thinking... they see mothman yeah they start to have dreams and visions and and stuff following it so it it's kind of another similar cryptid where there's a, a supernatural element to it if somebody can tell me with the amount of information we know about the ocean that it's impossible for that then i'll listen to it but you, you can't <laughs> So therefore, in my mind, it's real and it's possible. And these things can happen. Yeah. Because nobody can tell me they can't. Well, and there's way too many legends about this for it not to have some truth. Absolutely. To it, you know? These are these are there have been sightings of of mermaids and sirens, Book of Enoch. You're talking about sailors from sailors from way back then, like you said, uh, uh, Olympus and 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 in those times, Greek mythology. It's just they got to start from somewhere. They got to stem from some certain place, you know? And back in those times, nobody could say anything because they were building pyramids back then, mapping the stars. Who was teaching them that? And the fact that you have cultures around the world describing the same types of beings, exactly. it's similar to, to dragons or giants, right? Now you've got the it odd creature absolutely. where only... Where only one culture reports their sighting, but then you've got you know the same type of creature across exactly. cultures and continents, and yeah, so it brings and a it's lot pretty more much stayed the same. To you it. know, it has it hasn't the stories haven't enraged and got crazy, and oh, stories of the mermaids still stay the same. You can go check them out in Jamaica or Haiti, or you can go all the way up to Czech Republic and Dutchland and all up there where they have their own stories in Norway. It's just. There's got to be it some truth crazy. to this.
Yeah. <laughs> now, Ryan, to. I'm wondering, Ryan, are you like spiritual or religious at all? Like, do you have any? I'm likes? a, I'm a, I'm a spirit, I'm a spiritual person to an extent. I, yeah. I, I believe that we're just, we're just created from other beings who just got sick of this and flew away and went somewhere else. <laughs> that's that's what I think a God is. I got I think God is aliens. My my religion is Jesus Christ was an alien. That's me. Let's go, okay. my guy. Fair <laughs> enough. No, I was just cu curious. I was because, afraid you were gonna uh, say mermaid there for a second. Jesus Christ was a mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> merman. We're like, like merman. Sorry, merman. Is, a, merman. is a gender. <laughs> I didn't mean to misgender him. <laughs> yeah, no, I was wondering. I was wondering because, um, you know, when you had the experience of that initial, like, first very strong, like, hearing hearing the calls and the sounds, and then you described, like, you know, dealing with it, the aftermath of that and reverberating through your mind, like, did you have any other spiritual phenomenon happen to you, like, sleep disturbances or, like, other, like, encounters with something like other beings or anything like that? The first time I recorded them and then I went to bed in my rack and woke up for my next shift, I had crazy dreams, crazy dreams, like sexual dreams with the mermaids. It was weird. It was, they were weird even to say it was just like that, but that's what, what, what my mind was like. It was like, I couldn't help even thinking about it. Like it was just so common when it was happening. It was, it was just. Wow. This, yeah. And it was Were just, you like scared in the dreams or like, no, just, never. just like, okay, this I, is just what's happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah like i've never the whole thing is like throughout this whole experience i've never felt scared or mm. like that that this interaction was uh um, a threat in any way ever and that and that blows my mind itself mm. that that whole thing blows my mind itself the uh the sexual part kind of reminds me of uh succubus stuff too because yeah. mermaids have always had you know, some sort of sexual lore or sexual mythology around them too. Now, when you, when you see them at sea or when you saw them at sea, were you, you know, you didn't describe their song as seductive or anything, but did you feel like a pull towards the water or some sort Perhaps. of draw to I tried jump to get into as water? Close, I tried to get as close to it as I possibly could. <laughs> you, uh, you see me in that, I'm literally the wall to the boats right here. The boats rocking back and forth. I'm out there. I am. Just, I. I have no care. I have no care. I have no fear. Normally, I would. I'd be a little nervous. I get because I get nervous just going to the side of the boat to take pee and then go back to work. You know, because you know sometimes you don't got time to run to the bathroom. So you gotta while on the boat rocking like this. I get more nervous doing that than I was hanging my body three four feet out trying to catch this thing wow. on video. Mm -hmm. See, like, I wonder. Like, yeah, it wasn't even a thought. I wonder if the lack of fear, the lack of fear, maybe is a little bit of an enchantment on their part, like to lull you into some other state, you know, mm. and, and to make it dangerous for you on purpose. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if mermaids are good. I don't know if mermaids are bad. I don't know, but it's interesting. So Ryan, as you've, as you've started to do a deeper dive into this, have you talked to, you know, other sailors back on land? Have you talked to some of these guys to see what they've seen or sensed or heard anybody else who have had dreams, who has had dreams after encountering oh. one of these things? Oh, I've, I've, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be starting a, um, a podcast of my own where, where I, um, cause now I've just, I've just talked to everybody now. I, if they're a fisherman, if they, if they've been in the Navy, I, I talk to them. I sit down with them, man. What's the craziest things you've seen? I'm not the only one. I've heard mm. some crazy stories just, just from other older fishermen, older fishermen who've been fishing 30 plus 20 plus years. Everybody's got a crazy story, you know, and not all of them, you know, are crazy fishermen stories. Some of them are just you know absolute just mind bogglers like it's just the ocean is a mystery yeah. <laughs> well, absolutely yeah. yeah i wonder if there's like common sighting areas or like experience areas that maybe correspond with like ley lines or certain like longitude and lat latitude you know course co coordinates i can't speak english today I, sorry, guys. <laughs> I, i'm right there with you that's why yeah. i know I have the exact coordinates written down in my in my journal of where those experiences happen. Good, so that yeah. if I ever get a chance to go out on my own boat or, or get in a position where I have a platform with a boat of my own and that camera crew, I can go look for this thing myself. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be so curious about the Mediterranean. I feel like, because my, my husband is from Malta 
And I'm telling you, like, that island and that region of the surrounding sea is so mm -hmm. mysterious. Like, they have legends of caves that go from Malta to Sicily, like, under the ocean. And, like, yeah. there's a whole, oh, man, I forget the name. Uh, It's a character, like, from mythology, but it's, like, her cave, Circe, maybe. One of mm -hmm. those type, type of mythology characters. And I'm like, man, I believe it. Because there is an energy here. Like, oh, it's unreal. Geez. Yeah, it's I'd crazy. be so curious for you to for you either to sail there yourself or to talk to other sailors who have been there. And and it's and it's funny the you know European people have so many stories. My mother my mother's born and and raised in the Azores Islands. Oh, okay, Portugal. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, sure, I grew same up, thing. I grew up. Don't wear nothing shiny in the water. She'll get you. Like, yeah. like I grew up like that. That's like Italians too. That's a, that's a big thing. Don't wear nothing, no gold, nothing. Shiny. They'll like reach like, up know? and get you. Like yeah, yeah. Like this. <laughs> it's just it's just so that 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 has been a part of my life. Just that, just knowing because my mother knows. I tell my mother this all the time. She's she's one of the few people who I told about it first, and she just she just believes me, you know, because she just knows I wouldn't mess around with it and like anything like that. I wouldn't even talk about it if it was fake, you know. It's just. Yeah. the whole experience no, that is fine. well with with the other friends on land with the other friends who who aren't at sea you know how do you talk about this stuff with them do they think you've it's, you know you're crazy or you've had an accident on sea how do they receive it you know what every i've gotten really like good everybody just is, is with the movement to say everybody's a believer it's it's crazy you know all my friends like even if they didn't believe in mermaids they've seen the video and like well you've changed my mind guy like, i just it's, i you can't fake that i don't know what to believe now i'm all messed up i was going down the rabbit hole for mermaids at two o'clock in the morning with my girlfriend you know that's it's yeah. just i get i get that vibe you know it's just I've, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback and i think that's why it's just i'm so willing to just go out and do more it's just like nobody because i just think the footage was just so genuine you, you can't you can't fake it yeah you really that's can't fine. People are like he played loudspeakers over the intercom on the boat. I'm sorry, the intercom on my boat is only used for man overboard and taking water. You know, we don't we don't play around with that. It's not gonna be like, hey, yo, Cap, here's this mermaid mixtape, summer salmon album. I'm gonna get famous. Play this real quick. It's like, come on, bro. Like we only yeah. use the intercom and say if someone's gone overboard or if we're taking on water, and that's it. We don't play around, you know, because that's a, that's a safety measure, you know. So I'm not yeah. gonna go up there and mess around because it's crazy people people <laughs> but i welcome it because if i told the story i'd think that guy was crazy too it's a crazy experience yeah it is wild what are your own theories of what mermaids are do you think they are some sort of underwater secret society or some higher evolved spiritual being or you know something demonic or angelic what does that look like to you all right, I'm gonna take a sip of my drink. We're gonna get into this. I've been waiting for this. Guy. Yeah, he cracks his <laughs> fingers and yeah. He's like, all right. He's like, this oh morning. yeah, get ready to go. <laughs> no, my my whole my whole theory is like just they they were here first. Like they're they're this extraterrestrial all the whole way from 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 how I felt with it, how the communication was, how how I felt just okay with it it was it was just wasn't i don't want to say nurturing in a sense but like every interaction that i've had whether it be out in the ocean with with the noises or in my dreams or or even the thoughts have always been a just a, a good positive vibe and it's just always been nurturing feeling never no malice so i just think it's possible like there is because uh underwater how would we say um a station underwater station that has to be you mean to tell me aliens can go from planet to planet in, in spaceships warp speed and they can't handle the pressure of the, of the ocean where we can't handle it you know how yeah. far the mariana trench goes you know how far some of the depths is where we fish it's 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 the ocean is deep we only know about what five to seven percent it covers seventy percent of the seventy percent of the world we live in. You know, it, it covers yeah. a lot. So that's yeah. that's my theory, man. Is that they're either they they come here and they there's there's a base or a pod there, or they were just there first. And 
because I've I've seen orbs out in the distance at nighttime pop up out of the water, go right up in the sky, stay there, separate into one and two, go into diff- like that's a big thing with the UFOs being seen. You always see them separate, do some weird shit, and then they just go off in different directions. But it's just when you see it pop out of the water, that's that's everybody that's stopped freaky. on that that day. The captain turned off the boat. He said he said he's like he said look. He came out. He said, "Look, poor pal." I'm like, "We all see this thing. It's all nighttime. It looked like the sun was coming up. It looked like the sun was rising, but it just kept going up in in the night sky, and it was just just stopped right there. And oh. then it separated into two bulbs. They flashed, flashed, and then they went into different areas. So me seeing things like that, and I know I'm not the only one who's seen an orb come out of the water. There's videos of of people seeing lights in the water recorded lights that lady was just on a puerto rico uh, uh she was on a trip in puerto rico was she on a some type of cruise she just posted it white lights underneath the water and out in, you know i think they were just about to go into the bermuda triangle it's just crazy things just the ocean they were here first so they're just there might be a big parking garage on the day you know you never know Never so everybody know. their spaceship. <laughs> the government's Honestly. the government's interested in them because they're like, oh, they're not paying taxes. We got to get them paying taxes. <laughs> oh yeah, no, there's a there's a way to get to the alien underwater parking lot through Antarctica. Yeah. Trust me, that's yeah. that's, oh, that's where sure. the toll is. That's yeah. where the toll is. Yeah. I'm sure that I'm sure the government knows where some of the parking lots are for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah, they got a few parking lots right next door. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think one thing that just highlights how much we don't know what we don't know is for years people said, ah, oh, giant squids aren't something that are real. And then we started discovering that giant squids were real. And then looking at different species of these huge whales, which were just legends and myths for a long time. And they're like, oh, there actually are these they're huge species real. of males, whales. And yeah, science is so young compared to everything else i really oh, we don't even know what earth? we don't know right it's we don't yeah. even they said they said man could never be around when the when the dinosaurs world you know but then they found Quebec a tepe it's just it's just it's just it, the things don't make sense it never adds up because all the history we were taught was lies yeah like that, even that's... if we were in school yeah that's the my thing, favorite like... book after i got out of school was the lies my history teacher told me <laughs> great book if you haven't read it. yeah but that's the thing right i think a lot of everything they tell us not every, okay maybe not every single thing but a lot of what they not tell everything. us is false and a lot of what they tell us is myth and legend is actually true so that's like where the flip is so mm-hmm. you know you made disney made a movie about mermaids i believe that they are real yes yeah. I, I i think they do that just to just to desensitize yeah. totally. desensitize Absolutely. a little bit but it reminds me yeah. of it reminds me of the Braveheart quote: uh, "History is written by the victors, right?" And Always. and how I, I don't Always. even think it's all lies. I think it's mostly partial truths and partial, partial lies. Truth. So that you know, somebody yeah. hears something and they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna Spank Google it," news. and they <laughs> see a part of it is true, and they're like, "Oh, the rest is true." But it's like, well, no, you really yeah. got to dig deeper. You got to do your own research. Yeah. yeah. It's true. I think I think the only only way for you to get the right news is for you to check out the news for yourself. You know, you really can't be because you got these two sides and they're always going at it. I just like to look everything up on my own, make my own mind up about it, and then that's what it is. Because nobody yeah. can ever, you know, take your opinion away from you. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I wonder if uh, you know, I don't know if you guys have saw the Aquaman two that came out not too long ago. I think it was like last I, year. I did see it. Okay, so I there was a lot of like agenda revealing in that movie, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I wonder <laughs> they're telling us the truth with a lot of this underwater stuff that's going on and relating to like climate change and like I'm like, who is really behind all this? This is very interesting. So you love, I love how they throw all the real, real things in there. Just it's yeah. it's and, it and, makes and, you think, and it? how uh, how the underwater kingdom relates to possibly Antarctica being a very Antarctica. important spot, very important role. 
Yeah. So I was like, that's a, that's a whole, that's a whole other conversation. You see, you got to go sail there. You got to go take a ship and document. Yeah. I'm not being that guy. I'm going with the crew. I'm going with the crew so we can record them trying to kill me while I go up there. I realize now that you said go take a ship. I heard something different at first. Oh. <laughs> Doing that off the edge of the the boat too. Yeah. You're like, wait uh, a second. <laughs> well, you know, you know what this reminds me of is the the Mission Impossible movie. The last one, ha- I think it has a so, spar- spoiler alert. I think it has a a nuclear submarine that goes missing because of AI. And there was an actual Russian nuclear sub that went missing. And I don't know if it's been found again, but it plays into the whole, you know, media revealing the the truth ahead of time. The truth or ahead of time type deal. Yeah. yeah. And just something else to go missing in the ocean. Well, did, did these did these mermaids seem curious about you at all? Or were they just like, ah, it's another fisherman? Ugh. I don't, I don't, I, there was a total, there was a total curiosity to me because there, there was, there was a, a total connection, I think, in, in, in the communication aspect. Like, um, I don't know, have, have you seen all the videos I have? No, or, I, you've or, got, you've got quite a, a variety of videos on your TikTok well, page. Yeah, I have, I have a separate little, um, I have a little playlist. If you scroll over to the edge on your phone, it's just a mermaid emoji and it's everything that has to do with uh, that I've encountered or everything from, when the crab got thrown back to to the government showing up to the car accident to to the bone to the interview with the marine biologist with the bone it's all there it's all there well what are what are like what are some other ways people can check out your stuff or get a hold of you or contact you if they have similar experiences um if anybody has any experiences the easiest way to get into contact with me would either be uh, my instagram which which is a uh, too much underscore sauce ninety, or my TikTok which is dot sauce dot ninety. Um, I'm 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 pretty easy guy to get you know a hold of. I'm open to to just anybody who has an experience or wants to talk about anything they've experienced as well. Or just a lot of people just ask me this you know like just like like yo what do they look like you know is it true I get a lot hey man is it really real I'm like dude I'm a commercial fisherman I got an associate's degree and sociology that I didn't use okay I am not Steven Spielberg I have to, I, I, I I before I got on here I zoomed into my phone too much and I couldn't get out in the settings and I panicked like, <laughs> like <laughs> I don't, you gotta tap your phone three times to get out of it I didn't know that. I had to watch a YouTube video okay? he's taking I, screenshots I, of his face zoomed in yeah it was so bad I was, I was literally panicking I'm like oh my god I got this, I got this podcast what the fuck am I gonna do I, yeah. like, I had to watch it I had to load up my laptop and I had to watch this is so funny. I'm, I'm not like very tech savvy. Like it took yeah, me yeah. forever to hook up my mic and interface system for my podcast. I'm trying yeah. to do so. It's just I'm a fisherman, man. You know, yeah. It's just, what what I see out there, I recorded. Take it for what it is. If it's crazy and it sounds nuts, that's because it is. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Right. Exactly. So when uh, have you started this podcast already, or when are you dropping it? Um, it's gonna be. I'm gonna be starting this in the summer. I'm gonna be starting this in the summer. My first, uh, first guy I'm gonna talk to is a, a retired Navy SEAL who's mm-hmm. got some pretty crazy uh, stories to tell about things he's seen out in the ocean. He has video and picture of a uh, few certain things, and you know, I just hope it uh, goes well. You know, hopefully, I can get as established as you guys and you know the podcast. I look at you. You've been doing this for a little bit, man. It's pretty cool. You got your own little setup and. Yeah, like I'm cabin in the woods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it, man. It's very, it's, you know, it's yeah. all about a vibe. It's all about aesthetic. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I got stars that go away and come back. You know, it's just, it's yeah. just you gotta do what you gotta do. Just record it on the fishing boat. That'll be as authentic as it gets. Just oh moving back. I, want, I wanted to. I wanted to do it in the wheelhouse. I was gonna yeah. sit in the captain's chair. Yeah. Right? Nice. Oh, yeah. that would be a vibe and a half. And, yeah. And yeah. Just, you know, I was gonna. I was gonna try to do it like that or just something you know just because these things need to be talked about you know people have experiences who, who who are we to tell them they can't share them with us because it's not what we normally hear or the theory of the thought is just way too far-fetched to even fathom so i'm just like i'm eh, gonna push it away this this person went through a experience that's probably changed their life in in a certain way and let them tell their story that's what i like i i don't like when people like 
try to be so close minded to the point where you can't even talk to them. Like I don't even mess with people like that anymore. Well, I'm, well, like, all my friends know me as the mermaid man, and they embrace it. You know what I'm saying? It was never anything I asked to be. You know, it, it just happened. Now that I am, it's just I can talk a bit about I can talk to people about it, just as me and you are right now, and that's how it should be. You know? Yeah, I agree. Ryan, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us on the podcast and we'll link all of your, your links in the bio when we, we post this episode, but Absolutely, we're excited man. to see what you dive into next. Um, oh, I like you. what you did there, Nathan. Mm, yeah. dive ah, into <laughs> I like that. That's yeah. clever. I like yeah. that. Very nice. See, I, I gotta to, work on those. Yeah. I work on the clothing. I had to take a lot of fish puns out of the episode script before we sat down. Oh, can, I, can I hear a bad one? Funny. Can I hear a bad one? You got another one? Oh, I was just going to say your friends find it fishy when you share it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, yeah it's, great. Such a, it's, such a, it's such a drag. <laughs> yeah, it's such a drag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were they waving yeah. at you or, yeah, yeah. No, is it? that's great <laughs> guys this, no. this has been awesome i'm yeah. just yeah i really enjoy talking to you guys so next time you're near the water keep an eye out who knows you might just catch a glimpse of a shimmering tail disappearing beneath the waves thank you for joining us tonight on this journey into the world of mermaids if you have any mermaid stories or sightings we'd love to hear them share your experiences in the comments or message us directly don't forget to subscribe to midnight mysteries podcast for more conversations about cryptids and the unknown Remember, stay weird and we'll catch you next time on Midnight Mysteries Radio. Have a great night. <laughs>